Hey everyone, this is Madeline Fertile in Jacksonville, Florida. We are here with the Empowered PCS and we're gonna do a deep dive today on what it's like to do a virtual showing and buying a home sight unseen. I'm Christina Zimmerman. I cover Whidbey Island and the surrounding areas in Washington and also the Florida Panhandle. Hey, it's Melinda Cruzy DePerna in sunny San Diego. I cover the bases from Camp Pendleton down to the Mexican border and everything in between. So uh, we're gonna start out today, like Madeline said, with a deep dive into buying a home sight unseen. And some of the things just uh, we do regardless. So I'm tasked with uh, uh, this morning with how we set expectations and do that initial interview with you. So typically uh, a client who's PCSing here, we won't be live for this part. So we'll do a phone conversation, Facebook, uh, we can do Zoom, people are that, a lot of WhatsApp uh, if people are deployed. And then we're bringing in, if there's spouses, we're bringing in both parties, sometimes from different locations. So we start with a conversation. It takes anywhere from a half an hour to an hour, depending on your needs and how complex things are. Um, that's when I ask a ton of questions. I, I believe really firmly that realtors are only as good as the questions they ask. Because if I don't ask it, you don't know it. I get right down into, um, if you have any pets, you might be able to see my big guy behind me, but how big they are. Or if you plan to get pets. A lot of times when they purchase, people purchase their first home, they plan to get a dog. Well, we need to know that because if you're buying a condo, there may be limits. Uh, we talk about children. We talk about hobbies, what you like to do when you're not working. Will your spouse be working? What your tolerance is for a commute. You know, I may be able to only tolerate one kind of commute where you may be like, oh yeah, an hour's nothing. Or it might be, um, one person's willing to sacrifice that commute for the other person's work or school or the kids' schools or community. And we don't know that if we don't ask. Right. And what we usually, usually hear, I think you guys, is people usually say, like, go right in. Okay, I'm coming June 2nd. Uh, we need a three bedroom, two bath house with a yard. And oh, and a, and a two car garage, right? Is that's usually what we hear. Well, that doesn't help me help you. That's a good start. But why do you need a three bedroom, two bath? Have you got two kids? Then they each need their own room. Do you need a home office? What does that look like? Do you cook? Do you entertain? What do you do in your spare time? Are you a surfer? Or are you a hiker? Are you a motorcycle tinkerer? Those things are going to impact everything. And where are you coming from? What are you used to? I take notes on what are they living in now? And what do they like and not like about that? So I think that's like, that's the, the initial conversation. Then we get into money um, and we have to get into money first before we do anything. So we need to find out, you know, me, I usually ask because I'm not military myself. So I'll say, you know, are you an E6? Are you an O3? Because that, then I know what your pay grade is. I know what your BAH is. So I can have a ballpark of what you might be able to afford. But the next thing I do is pass you on to a trusted lender if you don't already have your financing set up. And we'll dig into that next time, uh, deeper on that. And, and that way we can all be efficient. Yeah, when it's, it's important to ask those questions. I mean, if you have a customer that says, well, I, I want a, a ranch style one story home. But if you just say, okay, and you don't dive deeper on that, then you might not know that maybe their mother is gonna move in in a year and she can't go up and downstairs you know, and all of a sudden they fall in love with a two-story home and you just got them stuck because you didn't ask the right questions. So it's huge to do those kind of investigations too, because maybe it's a one-story home with two steps to get into the first story and that's still not okay, you know? If or you ask those questions, it's a two-story, Madeline, or it's like a two-story, but they have a mother-in-law suite or, or there's a accessory dwelling unit out back or garage conversion or right. something like that then we know that there may be other options. Yeah, I mean, it makes it different when you go to see, because we're seeing the property for you and we're doing the video, we know what might cause an issue and we could bring up on the phone call versus what's not at all gonna be an issue um, because of those questions that we start with. Yeah, it makes a big difference too when you do those virtual walkthroughs, you can get a feel for the layout of the house. You know, when we see listing photos, a lot of times the rooms, look a lot bigger than they are. And it's because of the techniques that the photographers use. That's the whole point. They want you to see the room. They want you to see that it's open. But when you walk in, you don't realize that, yeah, it's open, but behind the photographer was this weird thing that bumps out in the wall and it takes up half the living room or something. Mm -hmm. So 
doing that virtual walkthrough is going to give them a really good idea of what it looks like and how it flows. So Christina, let's let's uh, maybe kind of role play this. When you do a virtual walkthrough, you're on whatever app is working for them. Um, sometimes we have to record because of reception, but what do you do? You, you pull up to the house. I know what I do, but what, what, is your, what is your normal walkthrough look like? What's your conversation look like that you're having with them? Good question. So I actually start out in front of the house and I will start with the video on me because a lot of times I haven't met this person in person, you know? And so I'll just introduce myself and we'll kind of, if we're talking, have a conversation about what property we're at. If not, I'll tell them the details, you know, it's this many bedrooms, bathrooms, square foot, um, and where it's located. And then I'll do kind of a 360 and it'll show them, here's the front of the house. If I turn around, this is what your view is from your front door. So they can kind of see up and down the street what they're looking at and then we'll walk in through the front door and as i go through the home i try and start out you know on one end of the house and work my way towards the other end of the house and let them know okay here we are in the entryway it's facing the kitchen we're going to walk into the kitchen and then we'll look at everything in the kitchen as i'm going through i'll point things out like Ooh, it looks like there might be some water damage on the cabinets or underneath the cabinets or hey look at these are soft closed cabinets or things that you wouldn't be able to tell from listing photos you know as we walk through too i'll show them the condition of the carpet or anything that might need to be replaced i'll let them know if there's you know a dog smell or musty moldy smell anything like that um one of the homes that I did, I actually opened one of the closets and the ceiling was falling in from water damage. You'd never know that from the listing photos. And so if you bought it truly sight unseen without any kind of walkthrough, you know, an inspector would catch it, but you'd already be out the money for the inspection. So, you know, trying to find all those details as much as we can. And we're not home inspectors, but we'll point things out that you should know about. So, because when you get here, we want you to be really happy with the home that you saw in the video so yeah and it's it's important to show quality too like you're saying i mean showing um if there's damage or it's soft closed doors in the kitchen or something like that but also showing them if you open the cabinetry what kind of cabinetry it is if it's solid or if it's um you know basically wood pulp and if the flooring is vinyl but it looks like tile you know i don't you don't want to get the wrong idea of the quality of workmanship they're getting in a home and that's hard to show in listing photos and it's hard to show in video if you don't um i sort of joke get on your hands and knees and and zoom all the way in and make sure that you're seeing it all which one of you said you take off your shoes too to tell to check out the cat yeah and see For if the sure. sticky or whatever i gotta know if that carpet is good carpet because to be honest when i walk in my house i'm not like a no shoes house but i take my shoes off because i'm more comfortable that way and if this carpet isn't good i don't want you to be like having to wear socks in your own house Mm -mm. gotta be comfortable there or you know if there's dog hair piled up in the corners of the carpet that you can't see in photos or something like that you know hey carpet's good doesn't have stains but you're gonna want to get it cleaned because it's got dog hair everywhere or something a little stanley steamer action <laughs> yeah I think, um, I think the smells are probably my biggest there's smells and sounds the two things you know um we're sitting here recording this during the the covid pandemic and all these agents now are like we've got matterport we've got virtual tours i don't want to take anything away from anyone but the three people sitting here we've been doing virtual tours whether with or without the gloss as long as we've been serving the military community because that's how we have to work so this is nothing new those virtual tours are beautiful. They're great. Our job when we list your home for sale is to make them look amazing. When we're representing you as a buyer, when you're PCSing in, which is what a lot of this series is about, it's us digging in. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it's like I have a really sensitive nose. I'm really allergic to mold. And, um, you know, there was a time where I wouldn't have withstood freeway noise. I've learned, you know, that you have trade-offs for different things. And then different nuances, like if you're, if you're lower than the freeway, you don't get the sound. So I can look on a Google map. And if you're in higher than a freeway, it's awful. So I can tell you, no, you don't want to even, we don't even want to waste our time looking at that. So um, those yeah, are really I mean, important things. And, and I don't think everyone thinks of that based on my experience with 
active duty military, they'll be like, wow, you're the first person in our lives that's ever stood on the road, stopped talking and said, do you hear that? Is that okay? Well, it is important. I mean, even jet noise, you're all in the military, you know, moving here, you're going to hear jet noise, but there is a difference between the North end of the Island and Coopville and the South end. I mean, there are different I mean, the North end is so noisy and then parts of Coopville and then the South end, you don't hear anything really. So pointing that out to people so they're aware, okay, we know it's jet noise, we're good. Or no, that's too much jet noise. You know, on the North end, they actually have soundproof windows in the homes because it's so loud. So that's something to be aware of. Helicopter, yeah. is it F-18s? Is it commercial? They're going to be totally different. Sound- I even have some that have said, no, that's too close to the hospital with the medevac flights. Yeah. Florida, we get the bombing ranges. So a lot of times, yeah, Yeah. you'll be sitting there watching a video and they'll start bombing at night and your garage door starts shaking. And Mm -hmm. it's just something that you wouldn't know if you weren't told before you moved there. So giving people that heads up so they know what they're getting into. And in California, we have all those disclosures, yet they're buried in a document that's 100 pages thick. And I can remember when I moved back here from Chicago and I didn't notice that I was within a mile of a landfill and we didn't have Google earth at the time to see that. Um, and I saw that in that, in the, um, disclosures, you know, I came out just like a military family. I was here for 48 hours. That's all I had to buy a house. And my, my realtor didn't take me down to the end of the street. Mm -hmm. So shame on them. And then I'm so deep into the escrow I'm now within a mile of the landfill. Um, those are those are the things. Yeah, they're in the disclosures, but those are also the things that a really good agent that really respects you, I think, will will do in that sight unseen purchase. Yeah, I think um, you know, we're talking about investigating houses a little bit and investigating neighborhoods and location. I mean, walking the street of the neighborhood, maybe showing them exactly how far they are from the closest, you know, gas station or grocery store or whatever. Um, but like you said, it's, it's about respect and I think it takes slightly, you know, a bigger agent in terms of comfort in themselves to show if something's not right with a home versus just saying, oh no, everything's fine. This is perfect for you. But if everything's fine, but one thing, and that one thing is big for that family, it takes a good agent and respect towards that family to, to step up and say, you know what, guys, I actually don't think this is right for you. And I hate to say it because I know you fell in love with the home, but here's here, here's why, you know? Exactly. So then once they're through that process of the virtual walkthrough, they've fallen in love with the home, they've gone under contract. What are some of the other ways we talked about earlier um, before we started recording that people who are buying sight and scene can have a little better look at the property, specifically with the home inspector? Yeah, I mean, um, having a good home inspector that takes really quality photos is really good and detailed in their report, um, who's going to explain it really well over the phone and walk you through what the issues are, so that um, because you've only done the one video, maybe two, three times, depending on, um, you know, the timeline and the customer, but um, trying to explain, okay, this is in the front bedroom, I know you haven't seen it, but let's do a layout of the house you understand what corner of the house it is and where where the inspector found this and what could be the issue or not issue um i mean having an inspector that gives you that detail and can be very good at explaining it over the phone is huge right and then i think i think after we have that general inspector i always liken them and ourselves to kind of like a a general practitioner and then if there's something else that needs looking at like the roof or the plumbing or the, the HVAC that um, you you have people who can also communicate that. They, they, you, you need to have great communicators uh, that don't have to just rely on the in-person aspect of things. So I think having those people on your team is really, really critical um, for these kind of, kind of purchases. And payment options, you know, a lot of these vendors that we use, inspectors, um, plumbers, contractors, roofers, 
it's hard for military to send a check if they're overseas or something like that. And that can be a little scary. So a lot of them have online payment options or other things that they can do that makes it really convenient for our families moving in from other areas. Yeah. And you just mentioned being overseas while you're potentially buying a home. I mean, after the inspection's done, you know, how would one buy a house from across the world? You know, how, how do we provide that service and, and make sure it's a smooth transaction? What do y'all say? I, I think that, again, it always comes to that setting expectations and having that conversation, um, knowing to ask that and not saying, oh, shoot, we're five days out from closing and uh, Joe is going underwater because he's on sub or they're in Japan and we're, we're separate. The couple's not together. So we need to sign docs separately. Those conversations have to be had because we've got to figure out how to do notaries or power of attorney or I always call it proof of life. I know you gals know whatever the exact thing is, but if we've got somebody going under or deploying or going dark, we and we don't always know that well in advance, we have to be prepared. Yeah, I like to try and get a power of attorney um, after the contract, after you find the property and go under contract and just have one on hand for someone that we know will stay in the city or at least be available in a city. Um, whether it's a mom, a girlfriend, a wife, whatever, um, doesn't matter. It just, if you trust them to sign your paperwork to buy your house for you, we're going to get a power of attorney for them specifically for that transaction. Um, it can't be a general. I think that, I mean, you can have a general to start, but we need a real estate specific that goes all the way into what's your interest rate, what's the address of the property. It gets very specific. Um, we need that to do the paperwork to, to be able to close on the home. And that can sound intimidating, you know, power of attorney sounds like a lot of paperwork, a lot of hassle It's really not. Um, I mean, it's very secure. There's nothing to worry about. And like you said, it's not a general power of attorney. General power of attorney gives someone control over basically all your assets. A real estate specific power of attorney is basically one sheet. It's very short. And it just says that they have the power to help you in that transaction, that specific transaction. And we can get that signed remotely. So if you are overseas, if you're deployed or whatever, there are ways that we can get that signed and back to the title company. But getting that expectation set up front where we know, we don't know if you're going to be here or not. Are you going to the training or where are you going? We have that in place. So when you get closer to closing, we're not scrambling and stressing you out because we need this document that would have been nice to have up front. So we try and take care of that just in case. And then I think I think a, a final thing we didn't talk about this beforehand is what happens after, right? Because sometimes you have to close before you get here. A um, <laughs> couple things. The first thing is is we pray a lot that when you pull up to your house, you love it, <laughs> because because that's definitely something we take really seriously. But I think that that you make sure that you have an agent that is going to coordinate with you and still be accessible. And if you do have to get the carpets cleaned. Um, that we're going to help you coordinate that. We're not property managers, yet we know that our PCSing clients need a white glove type service. And um, you know, sometimes we, have, we do some like work that, that's not part of a normal real estate transaction. And that's just what you do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I've mentioned it before, but when I have customers coming from out of town and maybe they've driven across the entire dang country and they arrive in Jacksonville at 2 a.m. and they want to just go to sleep. I'm not going to be awake at 2 a.m., but I'll leave a lockbox on your spigot with your key and I'll text you the code and you come and go as you please and I'll come get my lockbox the minute you say you don't need it anymore. I'll leave well, the light on. <laughs> <laughs> and for a lot of clients too, they might not be here for 60 days, you know, after closing and having someone you know, you might not know anyone in the area. So I'll go keep an eye on the house. I'll check on it, yep. make sure things locked up, make sure, you know, the heat's turned on a little bit if it's going to be cold. So your pipes don't break or whatever. So, you know, that's full service. We take care of all of our people until well after closing and hopefully for many years to come. So. Yeah. Moral of the story is we care. <laughs> yeah. Right. What, what do we say? Wear your boots on the ground too. That's right. That's right. That's right. So if you are deciding to buy sight unseen, if you don't have the option to come out and house hunt, that's what we're here for. We all have tons of experience with it. We try and make it as smooth a process as possible. And we want you to feel comfortable and happy with the home that you purchased. All right. Thanks for watching.